folks, I'm Vassal here. Zee Garcia, how are you? Sam Healy, hello. Merry Christmas, or oh, oh, in a, two months, Merry Christmas. But while you're waiting for Christmas, it's time to be shopping for Christmas. So we put together a series of videos on what to buy for Christmas for people. And today we're talking about strategy games. These are not games that you would give to anybody. These are games that you might give to someone who is a gamer, someone who considers themselves to be someone who likes to think strategically. Maybe that's you, maybe it's somebody else. But these are hopefully games that you will enjoy, or they will enjoy, or you will enjoy together. I'm kind of stretching this. Yeah. Go. All right. First game on our list is a game that uh, we have all enjoyed for a very long time, and it just got a new reprint this year, and that is Mission Red Planet. It has a really cool theme, steampunkish, where you're sending uh, astronauts up to the planet Mars and to set up different colonies and uh, mine the resources that are there. And you have a, a variable uh, hand of cards that allows you to do different things. These cards let you do, uh, let you do different things uh, in different ways. You can sabotage somebody's rocket or you can uh, kick somebody off of another rocket and then put your guy on there. And so there's a lot of different things. It has a lot of uh, different kinds of take that mechanisms in it. But it's a very fun game. The reprint is fabulously done. So you should really go check it out. Mission Red Planet. Talking about a game that is fabulously done, uh, I just uh, got to play recently Shakespeare, which is a nice strategy game about putting on a play and rehearsals and such, and it is a, a fantastic game, very well produced with gorgeous artwork and really interesting engaging mechanisms. You are uh, sort of drafting characters which give you actions and then using those actions to procure uh, costumes and build your set and pay your actors and, and uh, that sort of thing. Really interesting, very engaging, lots going on, but a really nice theme on top of that. So if you enjoy the theater, if you just enjoy some tight uh, worker placement mechanisms and that sort of thing, then I recommend you check out Shakespeare. My game is a two-player game, and that's Seven Wonders Duel. You may have possibly played Seven Wonders, a very popular game about drafting cards, but didn't work very well with two players. This is a game that takes that idea and turns it into a two-player game that's similar, but also has some unique and interesting things in it. Essentially, you're still drafting cards, but you're drafting them from like a tree of cards on the table. So when you take a card, it might open up some other cards for your opponent to take. And there's three different ways to win. You can try to get cards that give you points, or you can win through a military method or through a, a scientific method. So that the threat of winning through any one of those ways, you can be really behind in one method and still win one of the others, makes it a very tense, interesting two-player game that Seven Wonders Duel. Champions of Midgard by Gray Fox Publishing is a new game that just came out this year, and it is a fabulously done uh, worker placement game where you, uh, your clan is trying to gain the most points and you're placing your workers out to get different types of resources and different kinds of uh, things on the board and then you're sailing to defeat monsters that are uh, on distant shores and in the oceans and that type of stuff and it's a very thematic worker placement game that uh, the strategy gamer in your family would really enjoy I think has a very Similar feel to Lords of Waterdeep if you've ever played that game. So that's Champions of Midgard by Gray Fox Publishing. And if that's a little too thematic for you and you're one of those people who misses when your games used to be elegant, <laughs> then I have to recommend Gold West, a brand new game which I found to be exceedingly simple but really engaging in its strategies, right? That simplicity uh, really hides how much you can do in the game. Gold West is quite simply a game in which you're going to be collecting resources and then spending those resources to come out ahead, but the mechanisms in the game are all elegant, and, and really that's a word that sometimes gets overused, but I think it fits this game to a T. Gold West, check this one out. All right, well, th my game is about rolling dice and exploring the West. And it's mostly about rolling dice, and that's Discovery is the Journals of Lewis and Clark. This is a follow-up to the game Lewis and Clark, although it's not very similar at all other than theming. In this game, you're rolling dice and using those dice to take actions. But you're going to get more dice, and you can even steal your opponent's dice and use them, although they can easily take them back from you. So you have to be careful which dice you're taking. Mm -hmm. So each turn, you're either grabbing more dice or rolling dice and doing something and trying to get symbols to go down a path and get points 
there's enough nuance in the game and enough strategy in the game that you can make some pretty good decisions combined with the fun of throwing a pile of dice. So that's Discoveries, the journey, journals of Lewis and Clark. Speaking of rolling dice, Roll for the Galaxy does just that. That is all you pretty much do in Roll for the Galaxy. It is a uh, descendant of Race for the Galaxy, which is a card game where you're trying to build the most efficient uh, engine, I guess you could say, uh, for your race of people in conquering planets and different types of things. Roll for the Galaxy does has the exact same feel to it, but it has a much cleaner, I think, mechanism of rolling <laughs> dice and uh, using those dice to um, build uh, new technologies and conquer different planets and settle different areas and that type of thing. So Roll for the Galaxy is a great dice rolling game with a super sci-fi theme on it. If you're the kind of person who enjoys your card combos, co coming up with cool combinations of powers, that sort of thing, I have to recommend Elysium. Elysium is a game that has already gotten a considerable amount of acclaim, and uh, there's a reason for that. The game is really wonderful while still being accessible, and, and it's very engaging. I find it to be a great sort of set collection game with a lot of interesting powers on top of that. It's got a nice theme to it, though it's not very uh, thematic, but it makes for gorgeous artwork, so I, I think uh, you should look into it if you want a nice, meaty card game. Elysium, look into that one. Hey, we're back to rolling dice! So, <laughs> Favor of the Pharaoh. If you ever thought Yahtzee was fun, but you want more to it, that's what Favor of the Pharaoh does. It gives you a whole pile of different starting setups and dice that you roll, and then you can get new and different dice with different sides, and you're just trying to roll different combos. And you can get special things that let you re-roll the dice more often, or let you flip a die over to its other side. There's different special powers you get. So it takes Yahtzee and kind of ramps it up a lot, and you're just trying to get a pile of dice and roll the higher than everyone else. How you get there, though, is where the game is fun, and that's Favor of the Pharaoh from Bezier Games. Sensing a trend here because yet another dice rolling worker placement game. And uh, that's actually where the strategy comes in is where you, <coughs> how you use the dice that you roll and where you use them and what time you use them and that type of thing. Uh, Kingsburg is a very cool fantasy themed uh, dice placement uh, game where you are trying to build up your resources so that you can use those resources and build up the different uh, buildings in your village and your defenses in your village because when winter hits, the attacking hordes are going to be uh, trying to kill you and your people and you're trying to defend them uh, or fend them off. And um, it's a really cool thing, has a great uh, system of rolling dice and then using those dice uh, to win the favor of different people within the court of the king and the queen. Uh, so it's always been a favorite of mine, that's Kingsburg. Enough of the dice rolling. Let's talk about some <laughs> worker placement, or technically worker displacement. This is a game called uh, Five Tribes in which the strategy is high, but I really enjoy that the tactics are high as well. You really have to react to what the other players are doing. You have to be engaged all the time and look for that opportunity to strike. The game is quite simply a game in which you are moving workers about, and taking actions where they stop. It's sort of a Mancala system in which you pick up everything and then drop one off as you're moving around the board. It's a colorful game, it's got a very nice theme, it really pops on the table, but it, it will make you think. It's a really, it's a brain burnery kind of game, really makes you uh, puzzle everything out. It's a favorite of mine from, uh, from last year, if I'm not mistaken, that is Five Tribes. And both games I just mentioned, both Five Tribes and Kingsburg, have very good expansions that enhance the experience. So you may have already enjoyed them, and you're looking for something else. They're, that, that's, they're both really good expansions Absolutely. for them. Yeah. My last game is North Wind, which is a game in which you get on a ship and you deliver goods to people. Which is a lot of games, actually. But in this one, how you do it is kind of unique. In its essence, you're kind of searching through piles and looking for specific tiles, trade goods in, or to buy goods, or sometimes to fight off pirates. And what makes the game even neater, I think, is a 3D element where you have the ship in front of you and you're adding different pieces to it to make it better at fighting pirates, or to make it better you know, as you go down into the pile and look for more, just to put your goods on it. it it's, it's really intriguing. It's a remake of an older game called Starship Catan. 
um, but this one allows more players and is a lot of fun. Really looks good. Northwind. Strategy games. That's what we got for you. Um, again, if you like that deeper thought that goes into games or you know someone who does, probably a game on this list will do well, I think. I think so. Probably one of the ones I, I and, told you anyway. And you've got a lot of choices as far as mechanisms go. Dice rolling, worker placement. Yeah. Take, your, take your choice there. Take your pick. All righty. Well, until next time, Merry Christmas. I'm Tom Vassell. Zeke Garcia. Thank you, folks. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side.